Welcome to another episode of Inquiring Minds. I am Steve Harper, and with me is the amazing, encapsulating Donna Carlin. Donna, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> oh, I, there's so many great adjectives for you, but I'm I'm gonna run out of them eventually. I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to get my uh, you know dictionary out to start coming up with creative ones. But you you are everyone that I have given so far. So mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah, just keep it clean. That's all I ask, you know? <laughs> keep it clean. <laughs> I have to, okay, if you insist. I will. <laughs> you know me so well that you you thought I could default to that side. <laughs> I got it. So what are we talking about today? So this this is a, also a touchy one. So whatever happens around you, don't take it personally. Nothing other people do is because of you. It's because of them. Oh, wow. So when you throw a hockey puck at me, uh, it's, it's because of you, not because of me. No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> okay. That's the, the asterisk to what we're talking about, I guess. That's right. That's the opposite. The caveat, okay. whatever. Uh, yeah. You know what I was thinking? Um, people get angry at you because there's something missing within themselves. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that you don't tick people off. And, and you don't deserve to get a what for for it. That it's, it's different. You know, like how many times you catch yourself thinking or saying, it's not all about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're saying that for a reason. It's because somebody's taking offense to something because it's triggering within them something they yeah. don't like about themselves or something in their past history that mm. has pushed a button and then some. So, so I'm kind of interested in, in, in your perspective on this, because I think now, you know, we've, we've come through a number of years, right. You know, of, of this, you know, you used a word that has become more popular over the last two or three years triggering, right. Um, sorry about that. I will have to call my dad back. I thought I had him silent. Yeah, say He's hi triggering for me. right now. No, just kidding. Yeah. The question I would have is, you know, do you feel like we've become a bit, uh, too sensitive to things that other people do that kind of set us off and how we respond and react and how entitled we are to tell them how and what they're doing is either wrong or why it's offended us or why it's a, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's causing this conflict or issue between us. What, what are your thoughts? I think it's good to share how you're feeling at the time and how you're feeling. It's, it's one mm -hmm. thing to say, what you just said brought this up in me is yeah. very enlightening for the other person. Different to say you had no business saying that. Which is aggressive, and, very aggressive. Which is very attack. aggressive. Yes. It's not telling them anything that's going to clue them in as to why you're upset in the first place. It's actually going to put them on their back heel and in defensive posture, right? And then there, it's going to cause conflict. Yeah. So, you know, how do you say something uh, to let somebody know that this did trigger something within you? You know, when you said this, this is what, what came up for me. And 99% of the time, it's past history creating that trigger in that individual because they dealt with something with somebody else or in another circumstance. And this just was a reminder and it just got them going. So yeah. to say, you know, this brought something up for me that is really uncomfortable, it at least gives the other person a clue that, you know, they triggered something. Sometimes so you, I'll, no, I'll say, you don't even have to tell me what it is. Mm -hmm. Just give me a heads up that there's something there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, imagine how much more productive it would be to do that and to handle it that way. Right. Yeah. I think that, um, if something, you know, just the word triggered, right? At, at the end of the day, automatically, you know, sort of takes you from zero to 10. Uh, and, and I think the natural tendency for most people in, you know, humans default to the basic forms of aggression when something happens. I, you know, how do you, how do you suggest, yeah, especially, you know, uh, being in a situation or an environment with somebody that you know is there's the potential for something to be said or done by this other person that could cause 
you to go off the rails. Um, what do you suggest for people to prepare themselves so that if it does occur, and it likely will, how to handle it with a little bit more discernment and a little bit more, less aggressiveness? I think learning how to share the impact it had on you will go a long way. When you speak in the eye, when you speak in the, this, this is what occurred mm -hmm. to me. Again, I'm going to give people that heads up. Often what that brings to the table is the other person saying, well, in my life, and it becomes a con uh, competition. Oh yeah. 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 Which is, and, and then it doesn't an get you anywhere. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's right. You know, um, somebody, you know, recently said to me, you don't know, you don't know how I feel about this. Like I didn't buy into having this in my life. Hmm. Do we ever buy into having crap happen to us in our lives? I mean, seriously, <laughs> would I say that to the other individual? No. Because what that's saying is how you feel at this moment has no value whatsoever. And that's not fair. That's true. They are feeling something that is really impacting them. And I can only speak for myself. I can't speak for, well, you should do this or, or think of this. No, I need to honor that. I will often say to somebody, I didn't buy into having cancer twice. I didn't buy mm -hmm. in to our house getting hit by a tornado in the middle of all that. What I did buy into was literally looking at how I could approach things from a centeredness perspective rather than fear, anger, why me kind of thing, because that got me nowhere. How can I help you with what you're dealing with? Yeah. Is my next question, because that's what I found out for me, like I'm speaking in my own, um, yeah. my own self, for me, reaching out to people who I knew would truly listen was very helpful. What is it I could do for you? And that brings any conflict down and does not start an argument. It's not a contest. It's not, well, I had a worse life than you because of this. No, it's saying I dealt with a whole bunch of stuff. Let me help you figure out from your perspective, what resilience you have, what you can do, but I don't want to be held responsible for somebody else's garbage in life. Yeah. No, I won't put myself in that place to be blamed for what happens in somebody else's life. So again, there's a separation. Sure. Well, I mean, you said a couple of things there that really caught my attention. The competitive nature that we have has a tendency to, you know, automatically say, well, you have no idea how difficult this circumstance is. Well, you have no idea how difficult my week has been. And, you know, you see where it just ratchets up right from there. And there's nothing good that will come out of that environment. You'll both walk away mad and angry. But the other aspect is, when somebody says something to have the presence of mind to say, take a breath right? and somebody, you know, even though somebody is maybe not intentionally coming at you aggressively, but they're saying, you have no idea what I've just gone through. You're absolutely right. I have no idea because I don't walk in your shoes. I didn't experience it. But if you want somebody to talk to about it, and if you want somebody who will listen and try and support you in the best way possible, help me understand what's going on. And, and maybe there's a way I can help. Now, all of a sudden, you've just flipped the script on somebody who just kind of wants to vent or, you know, make you feel like their life is so bad. Feel bad with me, you know, because, you know, jump on the train and there's a lot of room in those circumstances. And and we as humans tend to tend, you know, tend to love that. We mire in the, uh, you know, the negative. Uh, it almost is, you know, our first default reaction and feeling in a lot of circumstances. And you can flip that script by helping them understand you're absolutely right. I couldn't possibly begin to imagine what it's like to deal with that. However, if you're willing to and want to, and you need somebody, I'm here to help you. And I think I've seen circumstances like that. You know, I just had, um, <laughs> had, a, had an interesting uh, week this week. I had one of the guys that we hired that we took a risk on for my software company, kind of knew the role we were bringing him into wasn't exactly a good fit. And where he had graduated in his area of interest was, uh, you know, not exactly in alignment, but came as a good referral. It was kind of a potential worth taking the risk, but I could tell something was up and he came in to have a conversation with me and he said, you know, I'm, you know, been looking for another role because I just feel like my skill sets for what I went to school for, you know, you guys have everything kind of figured out. I, I, I don't bring value there. And, 
you know, the size of the company is, is it, you know, it allows you to control those things and manage it to a degree that, you know, I don't bring a lot of additional capabilities to the table. And the other things that you've asked me to do, I've done them, I like them, you know, I'm good at them, but it's not where I want to go with my career. And he was very, very, you could tell, very nervous to have that conversation. And I said, you know, how do I help you figure out where you need to go next? <laughs> and of course, unbeknownst to me in the moment, you know, he, he already has that place, but he didn't know how to quit. <laughs> and I said, you know, the, the thing that I've always learned about people is I love honesty and I love, you know, I can appreciate the fact that there's anxiety in coming in and having this conversation but, you know, the goal behind any good, you know, relationship, and we, we, we have a solid one, is we want each other to be successful. And so I want you to go on. I want you to feel confident in the decision you're making, and I want you to feel good. And he's like, you just don't know how hard this is. I'm like, I do know how hard it is. I've quit jobs before. I've had to leave partnerships and relationships that I really thought were going to be super successful or, you know, that's where I was going to spend all my time. And then I found something else that I need to spend my time with. So I completely empathize with where you're at right now. Um, but I want to make it as easy on you as possible and not put you in a circumstance where you feel like this is, you know, acrimonious or, you know, I'm upset or, 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 or angry. And I, and I remember him leaving my office and I kind of like had to pat myself on the back because as a business leader, anytime you have somebody that comes in and you've put time, energy and effort to get them up to speed and, you know, even though we advertised it, you know, there was no false advertising with him as to what he was going to be doing and how, and that it was a risk for me to do this. And, you know, here five months later, he's quitting. Um, the old self of me would have been pissed <laughs> and would have been frustrated. And like, why did we do this? Why did we go down that road when we knew better? But, you know, like we talked about in a prior episode, right? You sometimes you know, we took a gamble, we took a risk on this environment and it didn't pan out. But for me to be upset about the, you know, the, the spilt milk doesn't do me any good, doesn't serve me in any capacity. And so I guess, you know, to a certain degree, I was so, sort of proud of myself that I think through these conversations, you know, I've had with you, you know, every week, I'm able to sort of look through these things from a different lens, a different perspective. The reason I share it in such detail is that's exactly what we're trying to get people to think about in these high tense, high, uh, you know, uh, challenging situations that we often find ourselves in, in our personal life and in, uh, all the time in our professional life. And how do we handle re and respond to them differently so that we can get better outcomes? One of the things that, that really works when we don't get clued in by the other individual, so they're angry at us, we can't figure out like what's going on. Did we say something to get them upset? <laughs> what what is really happening here and what we do is we tend to fight back or we withdraw we go wait till you calm down and i'll come in and yeah. speak to you again yeah. which doesn't really solve very much <clears throat> sometimes it makes it fester even more the easiest way to deal with it is to look at the person and say something is going on here that i have no clue about could you fill me in <laughs> what is really going on on here and nine times out of ten they will actually share with you oh i had a bad day i just had an argument with my spouse whatever it is yeah. um yeah. they brought to the table and i saw i'm sorry i blew up it really had nothing to do with you just a bad day <laughs> right yeah, yeah again nine times out of ten it has nothing to do with you it has to do with how the person's coming into the conversation the baggage that they're they're carrying like this guy worried about telling you that he was quitting. And sometimes it does work out. Sometimes they decide to get stronger in the area that they took the job in anyway. So it, yeah. it was a 50, 50 chance and you took that chance and you both learned from it. Um, it's unbelievable. Like it, one of the organizations I work with, when they, they don't hire somebody, I actually do a core values index assessment on them to tell them what they're better aligned for. So they could actually look for a job that aligns with their traits and their unchanging nature and they're blown away. But, you know, really it costs the company very little money to do something like that for an assessment and a one hour debrief, but it gives the person so much and they will come away thinking that this company is the greatest thing since sliced bread. So again, 
you probably left this relationship in such a good place that if you have an opening for somebody who did come and be honest with you, you might consider hiring them in an area that's more aligned with their talents and strengths. Yeah. So it's a win-win as far as I'm concerned, right across the board. Well, two things you said there that I think are really key. Um, number one, um, trusting your gut that something is amiss. That's actually how I started the conversation with this individual. Cause I could tell something was, I was about to get something for him for year end that he really wanted for his desk. And that, that was the first tip. I'm like, Hey, is this the right one? Is this the right size? I need to know. And he's like, Oh no, no, I think I'm good with my work environment. I'm like, well, wait a second. You know, you're kind of waiting on me to like get this thing. And you were super excited about it. I'm like, all right, you sure? Cause I just want to make sure you're not quitting. Cause I had this feeling, yeah. right? Well, you know, two, two minutes later, he pops up to my door. Hey, you, can, you got a minute? <laughs> it's like, so trust your gut. When you know something is off with somebody, sometimes just asking them, opening that space for them to share whatever it is, even if they're upset with you or they're, like you said, upset with something that occurred, you know, outside of you, you know, the argument with their spouse or somebody cut them off in traffic or they're feeling really stressed about the project that they got assigned just giving them the space and the opportunity to have that conversation and then making it, you know, the other component that you, you brought up, at least in my mind is, is that you just can't take it personal, right? At the end of the day, that's the emotion that they held in the moment that they held it. And that's the situation as they perceived it. And the best that you can do is sort of try to figure out how to, you know, untangle the, the web of whatever it is and release yourself from the obligation, but you can't, necessarily uh own their their feelings their issues because those will inevitably cause you conflict and could change potentially the relationship that you have with that individual forever and so i know you know i've mentioned it on prior episodes but those resentments that happen when you well you know that you're clearly off you know track you I don't know what you were talking about, Donna, but that was not me. I didn't do it. It wasn't my fault. And, you know, that's all you. You just overthink everything. Um, we've never had that kind of conversation, by the way. So, you know, that, uh, that's a beautiful thing. But if we had, we both walk away irritated and angry. And that creates resentment. And resentment always creates a super secret promise of revenge. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be there for you the next time. Or when you're really in a situation, I'm kind of like, ha, you deserve it. And you end up just feeling just icky about the whole situation. So being as upfront and honest as you possibly can to give them the space to communicate and to have that conversation, awesome. Not necessarily wearing it as, you know, uh, you know, the scarlet letter for yourself and that it occurred is also a really valuable thing to take away. And also look back at why were you in a relationship, whether friendship, business relationship, whatever, with this person in the first place, something drew you to, to interacting with them, to, to be in a relationship with them, no matter what it is, and honor that enough to be honest and say, what's going on here? I really yeah. would like to know. Absolutely. Great, great advice. I mean, I'm sure our listeners and our audience, when they see these episodes that we do of Inquiring Minds, probably wonder what in the world you could see in this other guy that you are, your guest, you're, you're, you're constantly having these conversations with. I'm sure they're wondering that. But Well, that's you know, another hockey puck being thrown at you. <laughs> we, we just get along. That's just what it is. That's, a, you know, we, we have these great conversations. Speaking of which, we have ways that other people can get in contact with us. There's ways to get involved in the Inquiring Mind conversations to let us know what they're taking away from these episodes and ways they can learn about our work individually. So could you share with our audience how they get in touch on all those levels? So Steve could be found at ripplecentral.com. He's the king of the Ripplers and Ripple Effect is huge. Um, I'm at donnacarlin.com with a K. So and she's huge. Out. She's awesome. Yeah. Re reach out to us through email, through our websites. You can get all our social media links yep. through our websites. Join our Facebook group, Inquiring Minds with Donna Carlin and Steve Harper, and share with us what you want us to talk about or some insights that you had because of the uh, shows that you listened to. And just be a part of our community. It would be wonderful. Yep, absolutely. We would love for that. And you know, if you're brand new to the show, this is season two. We are, uh, we, Donna and I get together once a week and we talk about these topics that we hope that will inspire you to ask deeper questions of yourself, 
maybe kick off some very inter interesting questions within your own personal and professional life and networks. Uh, we'd love to hear what you're taking away from these episodes, as Donna said. So definitely join us on the, uh, the Facebook group and communicate because we are uh, we're constantly monitoring that and, and contributing back uh, to those conversations to keep them going. And if you think of any topics that are important to you, your team or you know, just anything that you think would uh, provide a good opportunity for us to have a conversation, we'd love to hear from you on that front. But if you're if you're new to the show, lots of prior episodes. Go back, check them out. We are, um, you know, Inquiring Minds has been a uh, labor of love for us over the past year as we kind of brought this to fruition and made it happen. And uh, we've got a lot of amazing Inquiring Mind conversations coming up for the very near future. So thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to our next conversation, Donna. You take care and have a really good one. All right. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.